Have you been struggling achieving a great vocal sound? Maybe your S's sound too harsh or maybe you're a singer and you're just not happy with how your voice sounds recorded? Well, then you've come to the right place. Stay tuned. I got four tips for you how to improve your vocal sound and they're all completely free. Hello friends, my name is Waldemar Martens. First of all, if you're new here, check out my music on this channel and also the other videos about recording tips and advice. Today's episode is about vocal recording and you may ask yourself, well, vocal recording, what is it about? Just throw a microphone in front of a singer and you're basically done. Well, I think there's much more to it and I guarantee you that by paying attention to these four tips, you will improve your vocal sound vastly. First on the list is microphone technique. Microphone technique is the ability of the singer to change his position and angle with respect to the microphone and affect the sound of his voice in that way. First in that category and most important is the so-called proximity effect. Most microphones are sounding way warmer and fuller if you actually take it very close to your mouth compared to when you have it further away. Just listen to that following sound example. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. Notice the difference in sound between the two examples. The only thing that has actually changed is the distance of the singer to the microphone. And I have adjusted the levels such that you can have a more fair comparison because of course, when you're further away, you're also much quieter. You can use the proximity effect to your advantage. For instance, if you are recording a very intimate and quiet passage, you can come closer to the microphone and that will make your voice still sound fuller and just more appealing. And then if you're recording a loud passage, then you can retreat from the microphone and have a more balanced sound in that way. This also brings us to the next point with regards to microphone technique, namely controlling your dynamics. Because typically a song is not just one volume level, but the chorus is typically much louder or there are parts in the song where the singer goes higher in pitch and then also the volume increases. and the ability to control that by changing your distance to the microphone or alternatively changing your angle to the microphone that can help controlling your dynamics and make the recorded level more even. If you would like to see an example of a singer with excellent microphone technique, I would recommend watching Jay Buchanan, the singer of the band The Rival Sons. Watching this video you may think, well, he's just acting, but no, he's actually intentionally changing his distance and relationship to the microphone to affect the sound of the recording. I will put a link to that video in the description down below. The last tip with regards to microphone technique is concerning sibilance. Sibilance is these harsh S sounds or sh sounds that for some singers and also for some microphones are extremely annoying and especially if you later in post-production apply EQ or compression to the vocal track, they become even more exaggerated and even more annoying. Well, there are tools to deal with that after the recording process, but it's better to get rid of that at the source. And one tip I can give you to alleviate sibilance is actually changing your angle to the microphone and singing slightly past the capsule. Have a listen to the following sound example. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. The only thing that I've changed in this example is that at the second take, I just sang slightly past the microphone capsule and the effect may not be as apparent on my voice but there are certain singers where it can be really apparent and it's really worth trying out this tip. Next tip on my list is the monitor mix that the singer hears in his or her headphone. 
very often we just don't pay enough attention to this and just put the music on the headphones and check the levels, is it okay, all right, let's record. But actually, what the singer hears in his headphone affects very much the way he performs. We've all been in that situation. We listen to music on our headphones, then a friend comes to us and we're like, yes, what, what did you say? <laughs> we, we talk in a very different way when we listen to music or we have something on our ears. And actually <laughs> the same thing happens if you're recording vocals. And the thing is that as a vocalist, you very often don't even realize how much your monitor mix affects the way you're singing. So we should really pay attention to this. And the way I like to do it is to give the singer control over his headphone mix himself. At least the volume of the, of the music he hears. And what I like to do since recently I got this headphone amp by Presonus, which allows not only adjusting the level, but also a mix between two signals. And I put then the music and the vocal signal on separate channels and then the singer can adjust himself the, the balance between the music and his voice to his liking. It's much better than if the singer has to ask the audio engineer all the time, ah, can you give me more music? Can you give me more vocal? Can you give me more click? No! It's much better to give him or her the control over the monitor mix such that he feels most comfortable in this situation. Another tip regarding the monitor mix, and this depends on personal preference, some singers prefer to sing with just one headphone on his ear and the other one free such that they can hear their natural voice coming through one ear and the music through the other ear. This is a matter of experimentation and it's really worth investing the time and checking what works best for the singer or if you're a singer what works best for you. The third tip that I have for you is also regarding the monitor mix and the tip is try recording your vocals without headphones but playing the music through actual loudspeakers because the aim is to make the singer most comfortable in the recording situation. And actually most singers are not used to sing with headphones because it's really a different situation than they normally face when singing on stage. So the downside of this, of course, is that you will have the bleed of the music in your vocal signal. But in the end, if the performance is much better than when the singer sings with headphones, it's really worth the trade-off. You can minimize the amount of bleed that's coming through your microphone signal by just facing away the microphone from the loudspeakers. And since the microphone, if it's in cardioid mode, rejects everything that comes from behind, you'll be surprised how little bleed there's actually on the microphone. So just try it out, it's worth it. The fourth and final tip that I have for you is microphone choice. And it's not the last because I think it's the least important. Actually, I should have put it <laughs> at the first tip but I also see that most people will record with a microphone and that they have and they don't have much choice. But if you have the choice, if you have more than one microphone that you can use, take the time and do the A-B comparison for a singer. I've been guilty of that, just throwing a microphone in front of a singer and thinking it will be all right, it worked for the other singers, it will also work for him or her. And I was completely wrong at times and had really a bad vocal recording. Sometimes a different microphone choice can really save a vocal recording or make a vocal shine in a completely different way. The best way to compare microphones is to really put the capsules next to each other and record both microphones simultaneously while the singer sings just in between them. In this way you eliminate all the differences from different performances and really have a fair A-B comparison between two microphones. All right guys, that was it for today. I hope it was helpful and you realized that to take most advantage of these tips, it requires practice and experimentation. So if you're an audio engineer, leave your vocalist alone for 10 minutes just with the microphone and the headphones while you grab a coffee and let him experiment with the distance to the microphone, how it affects the sound, the headphone mix and so on, because only if he knows how these things affect the recorded vocal sound, he or she can actually put it into practice. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you're interested in further content like this, subscribe to the channel, also hit that bell notification button. Leave me a comment if you think I've forgotten something or, or if you like to have a clarification on something, I'm happy to answer and otherwise, see you in the next video. Bye-bye.